Okay, how you doing? We're going to talk about a complex rational expression. And for, currently, this doesn't look like it's a complex rational expression, however it is. And the reason that it is, is because if you take a look up here, I have negative exponents. Remember, a negative exponent means that that value is not in the correct spot. So something that was in the numerator would then switch to the denominator. Now, here's the thing. Years before that you've learned this property, you've learned it through all multiplication or all uh, division properties here. This is an expression, and the expression here is x minus 3 minus x. So I can't just simply say, oh, x minus 3 goes down here, and this x to the negative 2 goes up there. It doesn't work that way, because this is now an attached quantity. So what I simply need to do is just rewrite this as saying that this problem, x to the negative third, is 1 over x cubed. And that is minus x, and that is all divided by 1 over x squared minus 1. And I hope you see this part here where I took the negative 2, and all I'm writing it, remember, with the negative exponent, is the reciprocal. So 1 over x squared is just now the reciprocal with the positive exponent. So... When I take this, I can now start to go through it. So this comes back to adding and subtracting your rational expressions. Remember that you can't, do, uh, you can't add fractions unless they have common denominators. And if you take a look at this problem, it may not look like you're adding two fractions, but you are. Because x is a fraction. It is a rational expression, and x is a rational expression of x over 1. <coughs> so what I'm going to show here is that this problem actually is too simplified. I don't want it to be as simplified as it is. And the only way that I can unsimplify it is by working my way backwards. So this problem is really all the way at its end, and I need to now go backwards. Because it's for me to get this fraction out of the problem, what I need to do is I need to have now a fraction over a fraction. And I don't currently have just a fraction over a fraction. I've got this expression of 1 over x cubed minus x divided by 1 over x squared minus 1. So what I want to do is I want to take the numerator, and I'm going to simplify the numerator just as is and try to turn it into just one big fraction. And the way you do that is you start to work your way backwards. Well, x could have been a fraction, so the way I'm going to look at this is now as being 1x cubed minus x over 1. And that's a viable solution because x is a fraction over 1 because x divided by 1 is x. That is all going to be divided by 1 over x squared minus 1 over 1. So what I did is I took all of my values that were whole numbers and I turned them into fractions. And now what I'm going to do is look at the denominators of the numerator and the denominator of these expressions and I'm going to try to turn them into like Denominator. So if I take a look at this thing here, I'm going to come bring it down here. If you take a look at that first one, what I've got there is x cubed in the denominator and a 1. So what I now need to do is multiply this expression by something that's not going to change the amount, but it will change the, the look of it. And the only number that does that on the planet Earth is multiplying by 1. So because this is a quantity, remember, if you multiply one thing by something, you must multiply the other part of that. So what I need to do is I need to find a 1 that isn't 1. It is something that is a different number because remember, as a fraction, 1 comes in millions upon millions of infinite different possibilities as it looks like. So in this case, I'm going to stick here and I'm going to say, okay, multiply this by 1. So I must also multiply this by 1. X over 1 must also be multiplied by 1. But whatever I multiply must have a denominator of X cubed. So here I go. I'm going to multiply this by x cubed divided by x cubed. And what that now gives me is x cubed divided by x cubed is 1. So I'm really just multiplying by 1. It just has a different look. So I come down to the bottom. I'm going to apply the same thing. To make this into an x squared, I must multiply it by x squared. But remember, to change the look of it, you can't change the amount, so we multiply by 1. So again, I'm going to multiply by x squared. So if I multiply this fraction by 1, because it's a quantity, I must multiply that by 1 as well. So instead of writing as x squared over x squared, I'm just going to write it as 1, because it's the same thing. So now what I have here is I'm going to bring this down over here. 
is I've now got this expression of 1 over x cubed minus x times x cubed is x to the fourth all over x cubed. That expression is all going to be divided by 1 over x squared minus, so I have 1 and then x squared. So I've got x squared over x squared. So now what I can begin to do is I can now begin to simplify this part. So I'm going to continue to simplify the numerator. So now what I can do is actually write this expression of 1 minus x to the fourth all over x cubed as opposed to leaving them separate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I get 1 minus x to the fourth all over um, x cubed. And that entire quantity okay, is going to be divided by this one where it says 1 minus x squared all over the quantity of x squared. So now what I have is I have a fraction divided by a fraction, which is what I want so that I can utilize the multiplying by the reciprocal. So in this case, I'm going to do that. So I'm dividing fractions, so I multiply by the reciprocal. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, I get 1 minus x squared, and I get x squared. So again, remember, if I multiply the numerator by something, I must multiply the denominator, the, the numerator, the denominator by something, I must multiply the numerator by the same exact thing, because that means that it is a multiple of 1, which doesn't change the amount, just it's going to change my look. So 1 minus x squared. So what I now have is this expression. So what happens down here is I've now got 1 minus x squared divided by x squared times x squared over 1 minus x squared, which makes a, whenever something is multiplied by reciprocal, makes a 1. So I don't need to show it. So what I now need to do is simplify this multiplication. So what I now have here is x squared times 1 minus x to the fourth all over x cubed times 1 minus x squared. So now that I have this, what I'm going to start to do here is I'm now going to look at what can I reduce. And that's the point that we now need to get to because now we've done all the multiplications. I now need to reduce this amount. So I'm just going to change my settings here so I can uh, have some more boardroom that you can see it. Okay, so we're going to continue on from here. So I'm going to look at reducing these things. So x squared divided by x cubed. Remember, if you are dividing something of a like base, this goes all the way back to those Algebra 1 laws of exponents. x squared divided by x cubed, you subtract them, okay, like bases, you subtract the exponents and you put the exponent where it belongs. So 2 divided by 3, or 2 minus 3 is negative 1, which the negative exponent belongs in the denominator. So I now have, this is going to be 1 minus x to the fourth, all over x times 1 minus x squared. So, some people might stop here and think that they're done. However, I am not done. Because what I now need to look at is each individual quantity. And the individual quantity here is I have 1 minus x to the fourth, and I have x times 1 minus x squared. Well, if I look inside here, what you need to remember is that any variable that has an even exponent is a squared uh, number. So what I'm now going to look for is I've got two terms. There's only two possibilities that I can have for factoring at this point that we've discussed, which is difference of squares and a difference of cubes. Four is not a, a, an odd number, so it can't be a cubic a, a, to start with. But it is even, so that makes it a square as the exponent. So this now factors into 1 minus x squared and 1 plus x squared. And the bottom I have here is x times 1 minus x squared. And the whole reason I didn't factor this one is because take a look at what I've got up here. 1 minus x squared all over x times 1 minus x squared. So lo and behold, what happens here is these 1 minus x squares are the same, and they reduce to 1. And now what I'm left with is 1 plus x squared divided by x. Now... You cannot, and please you cannot, take this x squared and reduce it with that x. Because this is a quantity, and that quantity cannot be broken. And this one is a quantity of just x, which can't be broken as well. So this particular problem is left as said to be as 1 plus x squared over x. And that is how you do these types of problems. They are sometimes can be long and complicated, but just make sure you're going through step by step. Simplify the numerator first, 
then worry about the denominator. In this video, for the time of space, I did them both at the same time. But what I want you to do is to do these problems, just do the numerator and then do the denominator, and then see what you can do from there. So I hope that helped for the complex uh, rationale expressions, and uh, wait till next time, and uh, we'll have a new video up there for you.